Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Top Minds Podcast here with Dr. Scott Gray. Today, I've got an awesome guest with us today. Just to tell you a little bit about her, uh, Dr. Helen Powell Stoddard, uh, after earning her medical doctorate and Master of Science Anatomy degrees at Howard University, her passion to learn about health and longevity led her to a prestigious position as one of the only two students to get a dual residency program at the John Hopkins Sinai Hospital Program. And she's completed both residency programs in physical medicine and rehabilitation and internal medicine in five years. And now with more than 20 years of experience, Dr. Helen combines conventional and alternative medicine to help her patients achieve optimal health. And over the years, she's pioneered and fine-tuned a very comprehensive diet and nutrition program to make it easy for men and women to thrive. Dr. Helen, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much, Dr. Gray. I appreciate it. It's really awesome having you on here. I've, I've known you for a couple of years now, and I just love what you're doing there uh, in Madison and uh, the way you're helping patients. And But I want to I go back a few years and kind of <laughs> you know, talk about how you got started on this whole journey. So you know, what got you excited about getting into medicine in the first place? You know, Scott, that's an excellent question. And, and my mom actually told me about this many years ago when I was a little girl. I remember um, holding her hand and walking across the street in the downtown area of the city that I grew up in. And I saw a little boy who had a limp. And I remember telling her, when I grow up, I'm going to help people just like that. And it's very interesting that I had completely forgotten about that until she reminded me of it. And so I um, was so interested in just helping people to live better lives. When I grew up, we owned a health food store um, that, um, that specialized in um, different kinds of nutraceuticals for different conditions. So I was exposed to that very early in life. And I also remember saying, when I get older, I'm going to um, learn medicine in such a way that I'll be able to present to people the traditional way of doing things and also an alternative way of doing things. And it's so funny that God remembers your, your dreams even longer than you do, um, that that's exactly what I do now because I had completely forgotten. But I'm like, wow, that is what I do. So it's really been a blessing and an opportunity to be able to help people uh, in whichever direction they want to go. And even incorporating some of the alternative treatments into traditional treatments to optimize their condition. So I really love it. Yeah. So Dr. Helen, you know, you had this background in nutraceuticals and you were going into medical school thinking, you know, uh, I want to put these two things together. And, you know, obviously Western medicine has a specific way of doing things, uh, you know, and the protocol calls and all those types of things. When you went through school, was there any kind of like conflict or confrontation or anything that made it more difficult or challenging and trying to get through and wanting to, to merge these two things together? You know, it's, uh, it's interesting that you ask that because there, those are definitely two different, almost completely different schools of thought in how to do things. Um, so it really did require some reconciliation in my mind because um, the, on the one hand, um, they were, you know, the traditional school of thought was saying that this is the only way of doing this particular thing when my background said, well, you know, I remember that the doctor that worked for us used to do this and that really worked. And so it was... Um, something that I had to kind of tuck away for a little while so that I can focus and concentrate on the traditional way of doing things. And it really, um, you know, there were things that I had to really kind of suppress in my studies so that I can fully grasp the way the traditional thought was. Um, it wasn't until after residency that I was able to um, more... Um, to, to be able to combine the two schools of thought to, um, to actually come to a, a good way of proceeding and a good way of focusing on the issues that the patient had to help them through it. I remember even um, my um, attending at Hopkins said to me, we, we were talking about a patient who had 
um, constipation. And uh, we were just talking about the review of systems. And I remember saying, um, this patient's constipated. He said, well, how do you know he's constipated? I said, well, he goes to the bathroom once a week. He said, oh, well, you know, that's normal for some people. And I thought, but that's not normal. And, and I said, well, you know, if you think about if you are eating three times a day and you're eliminating once a week, there's a lot of waste that's still in your system, which really means then that now that can putrefy and cause toxic overload and can actually lead to other medical conditions. And he was like, well, <laughs> I, I won't, I won't, you know, try to interrupt what you believe, but that's not really the way it works. And I thought, oh my gosh. And if, if the whole idea is to, it, it, the, the goal of eating really is pleasure is kind of a side effect of eating. The goal of eating is for fuel. And so if you're uh, getting the fuel, you take the fuel in and then what your body uses and needs, it will use. But what it doesn't need, it will eliminate as waste. And so if you're not eliminating that waste, then it's sitting in your system and just allowing it to become toxic for you. So that was really one situation that I can look back on and laugh now, but I thought, wow, what am I in for um, <laughs> when, uh, when we had that conversation? But I've been able to reconcile it now. And yes, you definitely need to go to the bathroom more than once a week. <laughs> <laughs> so lesson of the day, if you don't get anything else out of this, if you're go to the bathroom. <laughs> not going to the bathroom more than once a week, right, go see your right. doctor and hopefully someone that, that uh, can see that Understands. that actually is an issue. So. Right. And I, so I'm sure that um, in going through this, I mean, you, you probably have dealt with that at many levels of uh, mm -hmm. different trains of thought and everything. And what I love though is you, you stayed strong in what you, you believed in and you know, putting the science and everything together in the best way possible to get results, right? It's all about- Yes, it's all about results. Result am I getting for my patients? So I wanna jump into that a little bit with you. And I know that you've moved into regenerative medicine. It's kind of like that new thing out there, even though it's been around for 30 plus years. Yes, um, yes. It's kind of like become a bigger thing recently, but I'll, my favorite thing is just kind of like hear stories about patients and what they've gone through. So. Um, I know some of the biggies out there are uh, people with knee pain or shoulder pain or back. Um, could you share just a couple stories of you know, obviously keeping patient confidentiality and everything, but of just course. kind of what you've seen in regenerative medicine uh, and some of the results that you've been able to, uh, to discover there? I have seen some incredible things with uh, regenerative medicine and um, I I agree with you, regenerative medicine has been around for many years because in my training, we had actually started doing regenerative medicine using bone marrow. But what I found was that most people who uh, ended up with a bone marrow aspirate um, for their regenerative process ended up with hip pain <laughs> later. And so I thought, wow, there's got to be another way to do this because first of all, I just thought that it was a bit barbaric the way the procedure is done. And, um, and it's painful for the, for the patient. And so when I found that there was a way to actually provide cells that, we, that help your body to regenerate without having to be invasive for the patients, I thought, wow, okay, I need to learn more about this. And when I did, I was totally on board with it. Um, just the mere fact that you're able to um, help people to improve their their um, their lifestyle based on doing some very simple things for them was really amazing. So I've had people from knees to shoulders to backs to all kinds of things that um, I've done. I had a, a chiropractor who was an older gentleman who actually came here from Mexico. Now I'm in Alabama, but he came from Mexico um, to have his ankle done. He was not able to flex his ankle or move his ankle. He had chronic pain in it. Um, and I did an injection on him and he was very pleased that he was a actually able to move his ankle. He didn't have pain. And I just thought, well, here's the science here. Here, here it is. I mean, we're, we're, we're actually combining the science with reality and seeing people improve in front of your eyes 
with doing these very simple injections. I've had people with um, rotator cuff tears who were not able to move their shoulders. And then I did a regenerative medicine injection and then they had full range of motion. And I saw that like almost immediately, which was, I was not expecting. And I gotta say the first time I saw it, I was completely surprised and I thought, okay, now this just can't be. But then on follow-up, you see them again and they're like totally excited. I was at the gym and I saw one of my patients who I actually did a shoulder exam on um, and did a regenerative injection on her. And she was just in the, in the class and she was just having a good time. And then she saw me and she took me and she was like, hey guys, this is my doctor. This is my doctor. She's the one that did my shoulder. Look how much I can move my shoulder. And I just thought, wow, this is like so incredible because she's like pulling me around the gym so that I can um, meet some of her friends to see how she was able to do it. And she related a story to me that I thought was incredible too, because she actually um, had the pastor of her church had the same thing, a rotator cuff tear, and he ended up having surgical intervention. And she said, he's still looking at like six more months of treatment because he can't really move his shoulder. He got frozen shoulder after having the surgery. And here she is, she, was, she said, well, I don't mean to brag, but look at what I do. And she was just showing, moving her shoulders in all different kinds of directions. It was so cool, I had to laugh. It was really, well, really incredible. I so mean, I've that, seen that, some amazing things. Dr. Helen, that, especially the shoulder, you know, I think that's one that we see a lot because as we know, and this is nothing against uh, orthopedic surgeons and you know, the work they do on soldiers. It's, a, it's amazing what they can do on a shoulder. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's one of the most complex joints, right? It's so unstable because it's not true ball and socket. Exactly. You know, it's, just, it's that rotator cuff and a lot can go wrong. So not that some people don't end up needing surgery, but just like the two examples you got, you know, maybe he could have done the regenerative part first. Maybe he eventually would need surgery, but to be able to get that motion back like your patient did is such an amazing thing, right? So it's, I love shoulders because it's, it's one of those super complex joints that you can just see amazing results with it. Like you, it's almost like, wow, did that really just happened. Is it really working that well? And I think Absolutely. we continually get surprised the more we see. And I, I want to jump back to one thing you said too. I literally just got off the phone right before doing this with you with a, a guy that actually works with a lot of orthopedic surgeons. And he was talking about the autologous, the aspirate type mm -hmm. uh, stem cell that they do. And he said, one of the sayings they have is come in with back pain, leave with hip pain. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and unfortunately it's, you know, that's a lot of times what happens is that they come in and because they have to get it out of the iliac crest, they end up with that hip pain then. And it may fix one thing, but it's like, man, now they've got another exactly. decision, exactly. another possibility for, complications, infections, and so on. So uh, very, very good point. So uh, well, share another story with us of, of another patient. Just some of your, uh, a story that's kind of amazed you or one you like. Well, I did have, um, I was thinking as you were speaking, um, I had a patient who had unfortunately um, been through a lot with her back and um, she had really chronic pain in her low back from having four um, surgery, five surgeries on her back. And she was just still kind of in pain. And um, she was like, she's an engineer, so she was in pain like every day um, trying to do her job. And she came to me because of her pain and she had heard about regenerative medicine. And I said, well, you know, I don't think I'm gonna be able to take away all of your pain. I mean, this, it would, you know, I, I think if I can get your pain down 50%, then would that be good for you? And she said, I would love to, she said, I can deal with a five out of 10 pain, but 10 every day was really just overwhelming for her. So we did her procedure and very interestingly, and again, like I said, I don't expect this to happen with every patient, but literally the day I did the procedure, she was 80% better. And when I saw it, it settled down to about 60, 70%. She, um, but she is so happy that, you know, she's now able to do normal things 
that she wasn't able to do before. So I find that to be quite a success rate um, with, with just all of the discomfort and the daily um, issues that she had with her activities of daily living and her um, independent uh, daily activities um, were really just very difficult for her, um, particularly in the, in the capacity of the type of work she did. And she was very pleased with the results. Um, she said, can I do this again? <laughs> and I said, well, let's wait because you know, you're still gonna get some improvement over the year. So I wanna see how you're gonna do and then we can kind of re, you know, reassess what you're going to need next year. Um, but you know, right now, I think she's doing pretty good. And so we'll see you know, if she needs to do anything else next year, but so far, so good. Um, it's probably been about eight months now that this has been going on. I also had a gentleman <laughs> who, um, man, he had a 15-year history of low back pain. Pretty young, too. He's only in his 50s. Um, he had recently married, and um, he had just been having this pain. He couldn't stand for very long unless he had on a particular pair of shoes because of the pain that he was experiencing in his back. And um, he was, um, you know, coming in the office, and he would go from a sitting to a standing to a sitting to a standing back and forth because it was difficult in either position for him. And he came in with his wife, and I remember teasing him and saying, well, you know, this can't be good for a newly married man. And, uh, and he said, yes. And, and so we did his procedure. And when I saw him in follow up and then subsequent visits with him, he is able to wear any pair of shoes that he wants. He's able to do whatever he wants and he's, he's enjoying himself. And I said, I just want, I just want to tell your wife that I was looking out for her. <laughs> he was totally excited. So he's doing really, really well. I'm so excited for him. Um, and for her, um, because before she was coming to the appointments with him, because she wanted to like make sure of what was going on the last time that I saw him, I was like, well, where's your wife? He said, oh, she's good. She doesn't need to come anymore. You're <laughs> <laughs> just making so sure the right thing was going to get absolutely. done. And, yeah, I love it. So, I mean, taken from both those things you just said, first of all, I mean, the, the first lady, four, after four surgeries, and most people think that you know, after they've done that, they're kind of like, you know, there's, there's yeah, nothing that's going to work, yes. right? And then it's over. And uh, I, we've seen that multiple times in our clinics that many times people that have had multiple surgeries are still able to get relief. And that's just, it's exciting that we can have another, uh, you know, quiver there, you know, another arrow in the quiver that we can use to, to fix this, right? We've got something else in the toolbox now with regenerative medicine when all else has failed. And honestly, the best thing is to do it first, but when all else has failed, that there, there's actually something there. There's something else. Yeah. And then this guy with the 15 years of back pain could barely stand. And I've had these because, you know, you and I, we've done seminars before to teach about yes. this stuff. And you'll have people that sit and, you know, the seminar is an hour long and they can't sit through the whole thing. Right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those are a lot of the cases that are so exciting to, to help. And, um, you hit it on the head there, though, and talking about newly married man, I mean, a lot of people don't realize when people have pain, yes, the, the pain is horrible, and it's no fun to deal with, but it just extends out into how it affects your life and your Absolutely. loved ones, being able to take mm -hmm. care of them, being able to have a normal relationship with your partner, all those types of things are, are so important, and, and pain can just ruin all of it. So Absolutely. Um, it's just fun to see how this stuff changes every aspect of uh, people's life. And uh, sorry about the lighting. It literally just started raining here in Florida. So it got dark real fast. So um, <laughs> forgive me for that. But that's I, quite all right. Thank you for sharing these stories. I think this is really going to help people to, to see the power of regenerative medicine and what's out there. Um, if people want to find out more about you, Dr. Helen, where can they go? Uh, where should they go to find out more about you and to get in touch uh, with you? Oh, that's great. Um, I have a website. It's called pain, the number two, whealth.com or pain to wellness healthcare.com. Um, I also am located here in Huntsville, Alabama. The telephone number is 256 325 5700, or you can email us at info at p2whealth.com. Excellent. And we'll put that 
in uh, the show notes below so you can get the links to the website, the phone number. Make sure you reach out to Dr. Helen if you're in Alabama or anywhere. I mean, you can always travel in. She can do telehealth with you. She can jump Absolutely. on the phone with you to, to see if she can help you and then, you know, schedule something to come in from out of state, even if you're interested in that type of thing. So um, obviously I, I've known Dr. Helen for a while and uh, she's, she's a quality lady and she'll, she'll do the best for you. So it looked like you were going to say one more thing, Dr. Helen. I, I just wanted to make sure that nobody, uh, that when people were looking for pain to wellness, that they didn't say just pain to wellness. There's a company in Atlanta by that name, but ours is pain to wellness healthcare. So just All wanted right. to make sure we made that distinction. Excellent. Make sure it's in Alabama. So, yes. you, can, so you can connect here with uh, Dr. Helen. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show, Dr. Helen. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was so great seeing you again and talking with you again. Um, You do an amazing job there. I I could tell, I've I've told other people how incredible I think that your company is. And I have just absolutely been very pleased and, you know, I can refer and and I, I just love it. I think that you have an amazing company and your team is amazing. And, you know, I'm trying to actually learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all learn from each other. And I think, you know, that's the best way and that we can help more people that way. And that's, that's Absolutely. how it all, it all works. So Absolutely. thanks again, Dr. Helen. Thank you. Bye. Bye.